How do I become more attractive and also learn the art of seduction? So first of all, you need to... What role has pornography played in all of this? It has completely changed the game of mating and dating. If you give men the opportunity to exist in a sexually satisfied state, which is what pornography does, then they aren't going to be having sex with real women. So the man that comes to you with this problem, what do you say to those men? The advice I would give is... Going back to that, that starting point then, one of the things that's emerged as a solution to men, I guess, feeling lost about what it is to be a man is this performative masculinity. Mm. In there, we, we we put people like, you know, I've heard you talk about Andrew Tate being... I don't think I've ever talked about Andrew oh, Tate. I really, I thought it was on one of your videos that I saw on TikTok or something. Mm. Would you fit him in the category of, perfor of performative masculinity? I would fit him in the category of a personality who's come to the forefront to help men who might be lost and confused to find their way in navigating the current sexual marketplace, absolutely. So he's he's offering a solution to navigating the current yes. sexual marketplace. Yeah. yeah. And what, um, what do you think of that solution? I don't follow, I haven't followed Andrew Tate very closely. I've watched just a few of his clips. I think he talked about acting in a way in such that your ancestors would be proud if they were watching you. And I was like, no, oh, that's a pretty good piece of advice. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually follow very few uh, content creators online because mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep my content as um, original as possible. I don't want to necessarily just do reactions to other folks. He's clearly a problematic character. Like I think that he was indicted for sex trafficking in Europe, correct? Yeah. Um, something like that. So I don't know the full story, but clearly people had, he was both loved and hated. That's for sure. Just, I really want to just close off on the point about the, the world that men find themselves in before we move to the world that women find themselves in and then try and tackle some of those problems. So um, they're lost in terms of understanding what masculinity is. We know that there's been, they're finding it harder to find dates. Um, they're finding it harder to have sort of sexual relationships. Is there anything else that I need to understand about the, the man in the current social climate? Well, I think that the... the problem for the vast majority of men, especially young men, is their invisibility. Most men are wallpaper. And the world does not treat men very well when they want nothing from them. I talk about that in the very first pages of the book, that to understand why some people are rich in relationship opportunities, whether they're romantic, professional, friendship, etc., and other people are not, it's not correct to say that it's the good people who have relationship opportunities or the virtuous people. It's the people that other people want things from that have relationship opportunities. If you have more of what other people want more, you are going to have relationship opportunities throughout your lifespan. And that's very difficult because imagine being an 18 year old man, you have no money and you've never had money. You may not have a job, you may never have had a job. So you have no skills you're kind of invisible to women because you don't have yet anything that women might find conducive for a long-term relationship. If you're cute, they might hook up with you. But if you're not even that, I mean, why waste their opportunity? Why waste their time when there are other more attractive options available? And you're also kind of useless to most men because you don't yet have the skills and the experience to be a good team player. Like I wouldn't want you on my squad if you've never been out in the field. You're gonna be a liability, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't have to carry your ass off the field. So you can't be here either. And that creates a obviously the catch 22, which is well, where am I gonna get the experience if no one gives me a shot? It's actually very difficult to be a young man. You don't have what either women or more experienced men want or need and you're generally very disposable. And unfortunately, we've seen that. I mean, young men have a very high mortality rate in all kinds of ways. They were shipped off to wars. You talked about the suicide epidemic among older men. Well, it's also very high among adolescent boys as well. It's hard to be a young man. I remember one of my guests telling me that they, about a study where they analyzed the suicide letters of men hmm. and they looked at the words used versus the words used in female suicide letters. And they tip, the most sort of frequent sentiment amongst those letters was about feeling worthless, feeling like you weren't needed. And the, the guest on the podcast concluded that really what we needed to find a way to, is to send a message to men that you are needed. 
And it's a strange thing to say, but it, but it correlates perfectly to what you were saying. The message sounds good, but it would be better to actually have opportunities to be needed yeah. than to be told that you are needed and that you are valued and that you are cared for. That's a nice emotional sentiment that doesn't really keep the demons away at night. Mm. People need to feel connected to other people. They need to feel like they have a place in the world. And it can take quite some time to discover that. What I've dis one of the traps that I fell into when I was a young man is I thought that I could figure that out by just sort of like noodling it out alone in my room. Like I, I was trying to figure out what I wanted my life to be about, what the purpose of my life was going to be before I even left the house. And I wasted a lot of time in fruitless rumination that way. It's much better to discover your purpose in life by moving through the world and examining your choices in retrospect. It's like you only really get to discover who you are by examining and understanding your revealed preferences based on your behavior as you move through the world. It's very easy to think of yourself in all kinds of ways when you're untested, when you're untried, when you're in the morally ambiguous situations in which human beings find themselves as they navigate reality. Are you saying that the evidence you're looking for or the answers you're looking for come from? Taking action, absolutely. They don't come from thinking it out. They often don't come from therapy. And that might sound weird coming from a therapist, but I do think that we live in a very overly therapized culture with the understanding that therapy is somewhat of a panacea in that it should be able to cure all that ails you. And I don't think that that's true. Therapy is very good for certain problems and it's useless for others.